Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the 2024 UWC Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Prior to introducing this year's inductees, we'd like to recognize those already in the Hall of Fame. Some are in attendance tonight, and others are here in spirit. Referee George Panaha. The Orphan. Billy Lasseter. Mr. 500, Joe Rules. Silly Billy. Vinny DeMarco. Jeff the Booker. Mighty Mo. Reckless Youth. The Olympian, Dave Patera. Patricia M. Steinman, Matt Storm, Luxurious Lynn, Sterling Rick Silver, Preston Montgomery Esquire, Daisy, X-Ray Stevens, The one, Jeffrey Bravo. The late Charlotte Club. And Mr. Black. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to honor our 2024 inductees. Known as Canada's greatest athlete, Iron Mike Sharp made his professional wrestling debut back in 1973. In 1983, he entered the World Wrestling Federation. He wore a black brace on his right forearm due to a nagging injury, or possibly to conceal a foreign object. While Sharp is most remembered for his appearances on Superstars of Wrestling, and Wrestling Challenge, he was managed for a time by Captain Lou Albano and wrestled Bob Backlund for the World Heavyweight title at the Philadelphia Spectrum. He was also Hulk Hogan's tag team partner in New Japan Pro Wrestling. After his retirement from the ring, he opened Mike Sharp's School of Pro Wrestling in Brick, New Jersey, and later in Asbury Park. That's where he trained many wrestlers, including Crowbar, the Haas Brothers, Ace Darling, Simon Dean, as well as UWC wrestlers, Billy Lasseter, The Ripper, The Orphan, Silly Billy, Mark Malaccio, Matt Storm, Bobby Piper, Warhead, and many others. Sadly, Mike Sharp passed away in 2016 at the age of 64. Accepting on behalf of Iron Mike Sharp tonight, Warhead. Now for our next inductee, one half of the perfect hooligans with Kurt Bale and one third of Lost in Hollywood with Bale and Lost Boy Kirby, the Hollywood Hooligan, first appeared in the UWC in June of 2018. 
he and Bale would go on to defeat the homeless heroes for the United Wrestling Coalition Tag Team Championship on December 7th, 2019, and they held the title for a record-shattering 1,190 days before dropping the belts to Tommy Salami and Grimm on March 11th, 2023. The hooligan decided to hang it up later that year, and his final match was a spectacular bout with World Heavyweight Champion Tony Cheney in October. The Hollywood Hooligan was in the UWC for exactly 1,967 days, and he held a championship for 60.5% of that time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now Hall of Famer, the Hollywood Hooligan. Our next inductee, Susanna, debuted in May of 1999 at the UWC's first successful female manager, managing the likes of Billy Lassiter, The Ripper, Matt Storm, Bobby Piper, and Tundra at various times. In addition to managing, Susanna also competed in four matches in the UWC, she spoiled Joe Rule's first appearance in UWC, defeating him in an evening gown match. And defeating him again in a rematch in New Lisbon. She then teamed with Matt Storm and Tundra, but lost to the Unholy Alliance of Lassiter, Ripper, and Piper. In her final bout, Susanna and Allison Danger wrestled to a no contest on May 5th, 2002. Ladies and gentlemen, now Hall of Famer, Susanna! Officer Big. Frank McNew Jr. started as a UWC superfan who wanted to become more involved. Every year, UWC would enter the Medford Parade, and one year, Frank started walking behind the parade float and introduced himself. Not long after that, he expressed an interest in becoming a manager. He worked on the ring crew and spent the next year training with Warhead and listening to stories from Billy Lassiter and the Ripper. He debuted as Officer Big in May 2003. He was the manager of Cell Block 4, and Frank loved everything about UWC, but especially the family-friendly style that made it a safe place to bring his children. Every year he would donate bags of toys, and always a bicycle or two for the annual Toys for Tots events. As years passed, Frank moved out of state, but always kept in touch his final appearance as Officer Big was February of 2010. Sadly, Frank passed away from cancer at the young age of 51. Ladies and gentlemen, accepting tonight on behalf of Officer Big is his daughter, Erica. Now, 
Ladies and gentlemen, our final inductee tonight for 2024, one of the United Wrestling Coalition's most popular competitors of all time, Biggie Biggs, debuted in UWC back in May of 1998. He is the only three-time heavyweight champion in company history. He first won the title on May 15, 2010, when he defeated Legion. He held on to the belt for 42 days before losing it to Twiggy Ramirez. His second championship reign began on December 4, 2010, beating Twiggy and Reckless Youth in a three-way bout. That reign would last until June 4, 2011, when he lost to Jeffrey Bravo. Between his second and third heavyweight title reigns, he and Silly Billy, known as the Big Sillies, captured the tag team title in December 2012 and held it for just over a month. Then on September 19, 2020, accompanied by Daisy, the Chuck Daddy pinned Mr. Spectrum to win the heavyweight title for a record-setting third time. Unfortunately, due to injuries, Biggie Biggs announced his retirement and relinquished the belt on September 30th, 2021. His last UWC appearance was earlier that month, September 4th, 2021, in a successful title defense against Adonis Valerio. Ladies and gentlemen, now UWC Hall of Famer, Biggie Biggs! said a lot about Mike Sharp, you know, from Wikipedia, <laughs> which is good. I mean, you know, anybody that didn't know him here, that pretty much sums up his career. But anybody that knew, knew him, I'm not wrong here, he had the loudest, most boisterous laugh that you ever heard. It was the boomingest laugh that you ever heard. And with, to me, the man loved his life. He loved life like you wouldn't believe it. And he could tell stories. Oh, he could tell stories. I can remember, I used to have to, used to, have to drive out about an hour to Asbury Park. And in order to, that's where his last school was. And when I would go out to the school, and I'd leave at five o'clock, I'd be there by six, and I wouldn't leave until two or three because he wouldn't let you leave. <laughs> um, anybody who didn't know him here is has lost out on a great man, a great talent, and a wonderful mentor. And that's pretty much sums up his life to me. Still a little bit surreal. I you know, just retired a couple months ago, so looking at this, being in the Hall of Fame is still a little surprising to me. Um, I spent most of the time here in UWC as a guy that most of you like to hate. Uh, still do! <laughs> and if you still do, that means that I did my job. 
job away. So, that being said, I want to say thank you to all of you for whether you were on my side or against me. You guys always reacted to everything that I did and always gave me more energy to do whatever I needed to do in this ring. So I thank each and every one of you. I thank uh, my mom for driving all the way up here from Florida to be here. For my girlfriend and her dad coming out and my grandma. And for all you guys back here for helping me get through all of this and you me. And to two other people, one's here in the bag, the other one's not, and that's two of my best friends in this business, and that's Kurt Bale and Lost Boy Kirby. Because, yeah, also got it. Because without the two of them, uh, I wouldn't have been able to go on the amazing title run that we had and get in the record books the way that we did. So, thanks, Bill. I know you can hear me in the back. And thank you, Kirby. Thank you, guys. my brother at age 51 to lung cancer and we lost Frank age 51 to lung cancer so we are a part of more than one special family he earned this place in the Hall of Fame Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to the guys in the back. Now give yourselves a round of applause because without you would be nothing. So I haven't been in a wrestling ring or an environment in two years. I didn't know what to expect today. Um, right off the rip, I see Kyle Payne. I see Jeff Bravo. I see Kurt Bale. I see the Gargantuan. I see Spectrum. I see the co-op. And all this unfinished business comes flooding into my head. So, Lois, I have to correct you because I didn't retire. Oh my god! I stopped wrestling. There's a difference. Retired means never ever. Stopping means I'll see you soon. Now, Morehead, I have had a dream for years. I want to start a tag team known as the Spice Boys. I, I want to be known as Old Spice. And you can be bittersweet. Because I think you need a tag team partner that's old, that's cranky, and takes time to warm up. So I can relate. So for me, if you're down, not next month or the month after, but maybe give me a couple months to get into ring shape, 
and then maybe we can take care of the co-op once and for all.